In this video, we're going to discuss how to visualize the convolutional filters from a convolutional neural network so that we can better understand how these networks learn. To do this, we're going to build on some ideas and concepts that we covered in our previous video on convolutional neural networks. There, we discussed how each convolutional layer has some set number of filters, and that these filters are actually what detect patterns in the given input. We explained technically how this works, and then at the end of the video, we looked at some filters from a CNN and observed what they were able to detect from real world images. Now, this is where we're going to pick up in this video, so make sure you're caught up on that before continuing. We're going to be using Keras, a neural network API, to visualize the filters of the convolutional layers from the VGG16 network. We've talked about VGG16 previously, but in short, VGG16 is a convolutional neural network that won the ImageNet competition in 2014. This is a competition where teams build algorithms to compete on visual recognition tasks. Most of the code we'll be using to visualize the filters comes from the blog How Convolutional Neural Networks See the World by the creator of Keras, Francais Cholet. I've linked to his blog in the description of this video if you want to check it out further. Note that I've modified the code just slightly to be able to illustrate the filters for each convolutional layer later in this video. Rather than going over the code line by line, we're going to instead first give a high-level overview of what the code is doing, and then we'll get into the visualization piece. The GitHub link, which contains the original code, is available in the blog I mentioned previously. So we're here in our Jupyter Notebook where our code resides, and the first important piece here that we're going to do is import the pre-trained VGG16 model. And here is the summary of that network. Then we're going to scroll down to the processing section of our notebook, and we're going to define a loss function that has an objective to maximize the activation of a given filter within a given layer. We then calculate gradient ascent with regard to our filter's activation loss. Note that gradient ascent is the same thing as gradient descent, except for rather than trying to minimize our loss, we're trying to maximize it. We can think of the purpose of maximizing our loss here as basically trying to activate the filter as much as possible in order to be able to visually inspect what types of patterns the filter is detecting. We then pass the network a plain gray image with some random noise as input. After we maximize the loss, we're then able to obtain a visual representation of what sort of input maximizes the activation for each filter in each layer. This is generated from the original gray image that we supplied the network. Now, I've already run this code ahead of time, and it did take a bit of time running on a CPU, maybe about an hour or so to generate all of the visualizations. I then saved all of these visualizations on disk as PNGs, and you can see those here. So that's a summary of what our code is actually doing. Now let's get to the cool part and step through some of these generated visualizations from each convolutional layer. Here, we're looking at 25 filters from the first convolutional layer in the first convolutional block of the network. So it looks like most of these have encoded some type of direction or color in them. In this one, we can visualize the vertical direction. And similarly here, we have a diagonal direction in one way and then another opposite diagonal direction here. Let's skip to another deeper convolutional layer. We're going to choose the second conv layer from the second conv block. Here, these visualizations have become more complex and a little more interesting in regards to what types of patterns some of the filters have encoded. And now we're going to continue looking at some examples as we go deeper in the convolutional layers of our network. So now we'll look at the second convolutional layer from the third convolutional block. Again, getting a little bit more complex and a little bit more interesting. Now this is the third convolutional layer from the fourth conv block in the network. Increasingly more complex, increasingly more interesting. And then the last one we'll check out is the second convolutional layer from the fifth convolutional block. And this fifth block is the last block of convolutional layers, so you can see it has kind of the most complex encodings in it. So notice how with each deeper convolutional layer, we're getting more complex and more interesting visualizations. This whole visualization process was pretty fascinating for me when I first observed it, so I hope you think it's just as cool. Now before wrapping up, I did just want to touch on something that we mentioned in the previous video on CNNs. Recall we showed the visualization of these filters on the left relative to the input images on the right. Let's focus on this one of dog faces, for example. 
Notice none of the filter visualizations that we just observed from VGG16 earlier in the video gave us anything that looked remotely like an actual real-world object. Instead, we just saw those cool patterns. Why is this? Why didn't we see anything like dog faces? Well, recall what we were previously observing was visual representations of what sort of input would maximize the activation for any given filter. Here, what we're looking at is the patterns that a given filter was able to detect on specific image input for which the filter was highly activated. So I just wanted to touch on the difference between those two illustrations and clear up those concepts. So now I hope you have a better understanding for CNNs after being able to visualize the filters. I know I did. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.